Welcome back guys and girls to another episode of Dad's Toy Garage where Tony and I are working on our 1972 Toyota Celica and uh, we put a 2015 Mustang EcoBoost and rear suspension here. We've done a wide body. The engine is set 18 inches back and we've got a perfect weight distribution front to back and cross angle on the wheels and uh, completely scratch built floor and a Miata front suspension. So. This thing is going to haul, it's going to be fast. Today's video we want to try and get the thing running on its own fuel system. We'll see if we get there. And there's a couple other small things that I want to show you guys that I'm going to be starting to work on in the near future on this car. So follow along, let's have some fun. You've probably heard me talk about this in previous video, but this hood for the race car had forklift load drop on it by the previous owner is what I'm told so from what I understand you got to kind of knock down this side first I've taken this down a bunch I'll have more finesse work to do in here if it wasn't a race car um, so yeah we'll flip it over and you can see the other side all right there is the dent I've kind of taken it back in this area already so I can reach out with a hammer and dolly you have to uh, use a stud gun again to get this because there's no way to get in there with a hammer and dolly and it had a pull down here because it hit and then I guess the core support stopped and if you've noticed in my videos the core support's a bit bent it's also from this um, so it was bent here and then because we got these kind of cutouts here once I pushed this back then I had a still had a, a piece where this pushed the edge down on both sides so now if we look down there I think we're fairly close already but uh, that edge has now worked um, so now I just gotta use the unispotter or the stud gun whatever you prefer to call it to get this area fixed right here and then we'll have a more usable hood on the race car I, I was getting clearance issues on that point on the grill now it should clear um yeah i guess I'd, i can also mount hinges i'm thinking for hinges if i can make it work we, me and tony had talked about doing hood pins but if i can make it work i'll just extend these i think that'll be a good idea for this at least i'll at least try it um, they mount to the car like this, so these would both need to, these would all need to be pushed two inches back So I'm gonna really give it a shot and see what happens So this should make it a little more clear what I'm doing to the fender the two inch stretch And we'll be stealing it out of that fender and hopefully I got enough to do both sides and rust repair, but this fender is bare metal, so Now we know exactly what's got to be repaired on it so here is the fuel pump module that we're ready to put in. We uh, cleaned out the tank over here. I'll show you guys that. Um, so we kind of cleaned up some of the edges around here, uh, everything that's going to come off. And now uh, we found a Permatex makes a gas, makes a silicone that's suitable for gas. So we're just going to put a little bit of silicone here and so on the bolt shreds. And we're just using this locking ring as the uh, clamp for the to, to clamp this module down. So yeah, it should all work good. And just to test it, to see if we can get it running, we're just gonna leave the line loose in the car. This is the one from the Mustang, it's a little long. But yeah, we'll connect it to here and then we'll uh, we'll see if we can get the thing running on its own power uh, rather than ether like we did last time or uh, brake clean or whatever it was. I think it was paint solvent. Paint solvent, there we go. Yeah, even better. Yeah. Uh, just finished tightening up the, um, the pump module and then uh, I finally got this ready. Uh, I drilled the holes a little bit off center on some of these. Devin had to fix all that. And I've got one bolt missing that we'll change out later that's the wrong size. So. And then we yeah. found some hose that we're thinking might be a uh, fuel filler neck hose. Yeah. So I'm all connected like that. About 80% uh, certain. So, I mean, if it's. Hopefully it is. So. Hey, what you doing over there with the battery? 
Trying to figure out how I can get the thing hooked up here. We want to uh, test it. Basically, we did a few wiring things to simplify some stuff in the cab there. And now we want to, we have our fuel tank and our fuel pump module hooked up. So we want to get it started this morning. And then uh, once we get it running, then if everything, if it's running, then we want to move the battery to the trunk um, where then we can leave it there at least at that point. So yeah, we're trying to get it, just get it started first, verify everything we've got is working before we change more wiring. But uh, yeah, you want to show them our slightly less of a rat's nest that we got going on? Yeah. Got some of the, some of the spare wires, nothing I was sure about, uh, only the stuff I was sure about did we cut off yet, but we got rid of, trimmed a bunch of ends off some wiring. So like there's a seat wire that would have been here, um, some stuff like that and kind of got some grounds hooked up um, there. Devin did one down, down there and uh, yeah. And so we've got a few, few things sorted to try to simplify it and and make it a little bit cleaner in here so we know we're not uh, dealing with as big of a pile of or a mess. But uh, here's another one I just saw with what's left of a speaker oh. with a whole bunch of metal shards in it. So you probably a, couldn't take that out too. You need a stereo in the race car? No, well, I wouldn't have more than two speakers anyway, that's for sure. Maybe just one dash one like an old car, eh? Yeah, that's right. So. Another thing I did, little victories make me happy sometimes. The door now works, one finger push. So we're brimming with confidence and we'll fill up the fuel tank with it, I guess, and see how, how it works. Well, uh, I don't know, what do you think, like 10 liters or a little less? Well, we'll probably I better work. put in enough that we're sure that the tank gets some. Uh, oops, didn't start. This First of many tanks. Oh yeah, we should, I wonder, we'll have to oh, find oh, out enough. It's custom welded, and I, I don't know if he pressure tested it or not. So the guy's the guy's pretty confident. So he was also really good. Yeah, I can smell the gas already. Yeah. Oh, because it was spilled a little bit. Yeah. And there's a lot of pressure in this thing. So. So you blocked off the vent tube. Yeah. It doesn't actually need it. Well, if you look at the cap, where did I leave it? Oh yeah, you said it was that'll act like a vent. It's vented by age already, right? Yeah, there's little cracks in the rubber on the cap, so that'll that'll vent it. We the vent ends up in here, so if we have to use the vent, then we'll just have to run it like into this fuel filler area. I know my dad has a '70 Nova. Um, when it's all the way full, it shoots out of the back of the cap there. Yeah, and this one will possibly do the same thing, although we're. We have that neck that the it's fuel not like have it's to level run up. like the old Chevys were. So exactly. You said we had a couple of faults on the instrument cluster. Let's see, what are they? Uh, there's one or two. Okay, there we go. So we got driver's door jar. Okay, let me close yeah. that. Let me close that. Yeah, there we go. Oh. Hood jar. Okay, that's closed. First advanced track, trunk of jar. Oh, why does this always default to on? Fuel level low. Yeah, yep. but so trunks open. It says trunks. Oh, I'll close that. Yeah. Let, let me just get that. Okay. Okay, trunks. That fixed it. No. Yeah. Okay. There we go. How about the same one for the hood too? Okay. It says for the hood to open too, or what? Yeah. Yeah, you, that's right. Are you in neutral there? <laughs> I think so. Otherwise, we'll, we're gonna find, we'll find out. We're gonna <laughs> shoot some two wheel dollies out the back and and wreck the rear end. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So we have no water pump at this point. Yeah. So we can't run it too long, right? That's right. Okay. Where's my clutch switch? Oh, there it is. Uh, nope. Is the throttle down or up? <laughs> there we go. Clutch is in? Yeah. <laughs> It sounds nice though. Because it's a direct injected engine, it yeah. takes a while for it to prime the fuel. So what are, what are we trying to attempt here, Tony? Uh, just trying to get it fired up on on the fuel. The, um, so we've had, this is the first time we're trying to fire it up on our factory fuel or whatever system. So 
I'm not sure if there's a way to let heal it and prime it without making a horrible mess everywhere. Mm. But yeah, the direct injection engine sometimes have to crank a bit because it's a mechanical fuel pump that has to prime the, the fuel system before it'll fire up. Hopefully that's all we're running into. When, and but apparently, uh, if you plug a light switch into the instrument cluster, does, yeah. it, does the car start? It doesn't seem to. Oh, okay. The instrument cluster doesn't seem to work at all then. Here's the 2015 Mustang uh, steering column and steering wheel. It's telescopic and tilt. So I've made a little bit of a, a design that I started to, so that we can mount this into the car. But it bolts here and here on each side. And so the first thing I did was this angle bracket, uh, some weld nuts on there. So that bolts in place. Then I've welded these pieces in this location and it bolts there. So now going into the car we can um, weld this in these will be trimmed down yet so the other thing that's been happening in here is Tony's been relocating the battery so right here is our engine bay fuse block um, that's where the battery uses is set he stretched them out a little bit and we're thinking we're gonna have the battery behind the seat here we couldn't find any rules in, in any of the racing things or any of the racing rules where it's against having the battery here and we'll put it in a box I guess so I've trimmed down the column uh, supports these ones that were really long and I welded a little braces on this way and along here we have a bar that goes across where our dashboard mounts to this will be the first part where it tack welds onto the uh, dashboard support I got the steering wheel mocked up this is kind of the view you'll see when you're sitting in the car Right about at this height right now, I think we might lower the seat, which would kind of bring us down to about here. Uh, just to give Tony some more headroom. Um, but that's kind of my, what would you say, MacGyvered, schmated hanger system. So I just got a, a big C clamp, channel clamp, whatever, and then I've welded kind of two um, wall pegs, like for hanging all my parts on the flat board there. Yeah, so that holds that in place. And if we step out, it's kind of right about where it needs to be. So if you get up underneath the dashboard, you can see the brackets that I've tack welded together. And they're tack welded onto our dashboard support, which is this one right there. It goes from one end of the car to the other and it bolts the dashboard in. So it'll now share with the steering wheel column and it's telescopic and rate and uh, you can raise and lower it so the next thing will be is right now I have it braced up here so when Tony comes down on our next work day we can decide if that height is good or not because he'll need a different driving position than me um, then we'll have to figure out where we're going to triangulate this it might be kind of a brace from here to here. I'm not sure yet, but that'll be the start of that. And uh, just one more look here. And if you're at the front of the car, that's what you'll see there. Well, guys and girls, we didn't get this thing started today. Um, we aren't getting spark at the spark plugs or the coils. But everything else seems to be functioning, so we got to get a couple of specialized Ford equipment to read a couple of the things, get a little deeper into this. Tony wants to do a bit of studying on it. But on another note, I have got the steering wheel mocked up, and in next video, there's some neat things going to be happening. It'll involve me lowering the seat on the frame. It'll be a lot of custom work with our Honda SIR seat, and. Uh, we'll see if we can get the pedals done. I know I need to build the firewall before that. So stay tuned for next build series on Project Snake Charmer. And uh, we'll talk to you guys later.